Paper Nebula is a shoot 'em up that comes out on the PC, specifically Steam, today, October 20th, 2022, for the price of $17.99, with a 10% launch discount. But before I begin this review, this key was obtained from the developer for review purposes. That won't change my opinion of the game in the end, but you should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? The basics of the core of Paper Nebula is simple. You play as Vila, seemingly stuck in a nebula infested with aliens left and right. But luckily, she's seemingly found an AI. A sassy AI. Also the ability to make drones. Your job is simple. Use your constructed drone to fight your way through the different waves of enemies and hopefully find a future that's going to be reasonable to you. Why does it look like a paper airplane in terms of the drone? No idea, but let's go with artistic choice. As to my critique, I'll start with the gameplay. Sure, the basics of the genre are here. Enemies fly down and shoot you, and while you could dodge and try to avoid their bullets altogether, the best course of action is to, of course, fire back. Enemies are rather simple and only have one weapon or motion to fight with, which isn't unexpected in a shoot 'em up, and so it's starting on the same level as everyone else. Your tools are as follows. Your main gun, which at default shoots out a single laser projectile, which does not have a default auto fire. Yes, you heard me. Technically, technically, you don't have a default auto fire. Sort of. See, in the menu, you can turn on the option for auto firing. But there's a catch. See, the auto fire rate of the weapon is not that fast. Not as fast as mashing the button. And when you have bosses where firing the weapon as fast as you can is fortuitous, you can understand why you wouldn't want to turn it on. I do wish this fire rate was a little faster by default because I really don't feel like button mashing in the year of 2022. But regardless, I did. You also have an ultimate fire method with an alternate fire button eventually. See, the ultimate and other big portions of firepower upgrades, such as upgraded cannons, come from killing a number of enemies and copying their weapons, and altering your ship before you start a run. The number of enemies to defeat in many of these cases are significant, where three or four runs may be needed to grab the item with very good runs. So it leads to some replayability, which you'd think would be a positive to the game, but it's not. More on that later. In addition, there are no power-ups in terms of weapons on the field, only an invincibility power-up, which I wasn't exactly sure what it did at first. It just sort of made me seize out like you would as a power star in Mario, but for a shoot 'em up and having these colors, just didn't make a lot of sense to me. There are seven levels in the game, and I'm going to be honest here. The game is a slog in many aspects. At least the controls are decent for the most part in the movement, and I didn't feel like the game was fighting me in this aspect. This does feel a little different from some games in the fact that it uses the wide screen and the screen space in question, which is nice. Your ship is fun to look at, and it's just a paper airplane. That's cool. That's nice, right? Okay, good thing said. Now, unfortunately, this is one of the things I don't like doing about these reviews. I have to rip this game apart. For the first 10 minutes, things are fine. It's a basic shoot 'em up with enemies with recognizable patterns that you should be able to avoid. But the cracks start showing almost immediately. For a game that indicates it's a fast-paced arcade game, its pace doesn't feel that fast in the big picture, and the tension that the game's seemingly going for isn't exactly going to get your blood pumping. There's a combination of factors that are related to this. First, the startup time for enemies to start firing, mind you, not moving, but firing, can be pretty long. You can take down a reasonable amount of enemies before they even start firing once you get to know their basic patterns. 
And even in the cases that you don't, you've made plenty of space on the screen to be able to avoid damage. Which, okay, you could say that about a lot of shoot 'em ups, but it was really present here and more than its counterparts. A lot of the challenge came from just me losing focus because the game wasn't really drawing me in. And quite frankly, the game isn't that difficult even if you don't use some of the upgrades that you get from the enemies. Part of this is also the fact that enemy firing patterns don't do a whole lot to change things up. You do get in the late game a homing missile that comes very slowly after you, but where's things like a spread pattern with basic enemies, a shotgun pattern, a big bullet to avoid, anything. Everything here is drawn down to the lowest common denominator in terms of challenge. And in a genre where you need a little bit of splash and variety, especially for short games, Paper Nebula fails to really do anything to get me excited in its levels. Now people may say, hold on Dragonix, I see you taking damage on the screen and failing so that you can get those upgrades, so it couldn't have been that easy, right? Well, yes, I did die, and you do get things like health upgrades to be able to take more than two big hits. But a lot of what you will do in this game is just using the information of failed runs, quote unquote failed runs, so that you can avoid those big hits the next time around. Which, yes, that's in every shoot 'em up a game, but let me give you a specific example of this one. This first boss has a gas attack that actually goes rather quickly once it goes. And the thing is, is that if you're stuck at a particular part of the screen and he's angled in a particular way, you're dying. There's no way that you're getting out of the way of the gas attack because it literally takes up like a fourth of the screen. And so knowing how he moves and where to place your guy is very important for this battle. But here's the thing, getting into the position once you know that isn't that challenging. It's not like you are, you know, okay, I'm dodging, 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 and I need to put in the right place at the right time in this little, little pixel perfect portion. No, you just need to move to the left or right of the screen at certain points and you have a lot of space to work with. All that information means that for the next time around, you're probably not taking damage. But I found that even in that case, a lot of my deaths in this game had to do less with the challenge and more with something else. The presentation. The ships and the enemy ships, perfectly fine. You can see them against the background thanks to the outlines. But the problem with the actual lasers and the bullets is that they don't pop against the background. Some of them sort of blend into the background, even red against blue, which, yeah, it shouldn't necessarily blend in. The way that they use the hues in this game, they can start to be a little bit blendy. And the thing is, if you're trying to react to bullets and you're trying to figure out, wait, is that a bullet or is that my bullet or their bullet, you shouldn't be asking those questions in the middle of battle. It should be easy to see. Even with some of the more bigger bullets that they have in the game, it's hard to see because they didn't make it pop against the background. That's a huge problem for a shmup. But my bigger problem is the explosions that happen, specifically with bosses. Let me put aside that the explosion itself <laughs> doesn't look like an explosion per se, it looks like you put all the colors that you can make tie-dye with into a vat with the majority of them being gray and black. But it's how big the explosion is and how it can literally overshadow everything on screen. It is the top layer. And the thing is, anything in the explosion, you can't see, which I understand for some people. Okay, that would make sense in real life. This is one of those situations where Real life doesn't make sense here for this game because if I can't see what's coming with something exploding, then I can't dodge. This is how I died to a boss. Even though I defeated the boss, because of the explosions taking up the screen, I couldn't see that, oh, wait, he had some more projectiles that he somehow got out, and oh, I'm dead. You know how frustrating that kind of stuff is for a shmup? 
and having to replay that portion and having it come again and again this is the kind of stuff that you have to avoid this is the stuff that presentation for a shmup is important on and paper nebula even for the words i could say about it not necessarily being the most shiny presentation it may not be the most appealing presentation this is where it fails where i'm guessing at every point whether i can see things also there's no invincibility when you get hit so if you get stuck in the corner well sucks to be you you're pretty much dead which feels intentional honestly to try to push up the difficulty but i'm not sure why you do that as opposed to making more different patterns or different enemy types it's brutal for being brutal but not necessarily brutal in the right way you want to punish mistakes in shmups but i don't know if one mistake should end a run and sure bosses can be a little bit more than regular enemies in a lot of cases but there's six enemy types and three boss types in the game which yeah that's okay i guess but even then <laughs> even then you've seen the last 10 minutes of this review anybody who follows me on this channel knows that when it comes to my reviews i don't try to use the same footage or similar looking footage if i can i will try to use as much of a variety as possible and that's purposeful to show you more of the game you've probably seen the repeated footage in this game and been like well wait a minute that's not repeated footage that just looks very similar and that's because it is it's not me reusing clips it's that clips sort of look the same because i'm doing the same levels over and over again and even the levels have similarities with each other in it so yeah there's a problem here and the big problem replayability the game is indicated to be a roguelike and to some extent that's true the game forces you to restart if you go through the first six levels and die in those but if you get to that sixth level you actually start at the seventh level every time because for some reason the game kills you once you finish the sixth level for maybe a story reason but it actually frustrated me when that happened i beat the sixth level and then all of a sudden i died i didn't know what happened and i literally closed the game and walked away at that point and said okay i'm done with this i'm so pissed off at this game but I'm a professional. I decided to come back. And notice I started on the seventh level. Okay. Weird. But apparently that was intentional because this is the final boss of the game. And it's a little bit more difficult than everything else up to that point. But why? Why? And the fact is, if you beat this boss and, you know, complete the game. Guess what happens when you try to restart? That's right, it just spawns you at the ending. You know, a replayable game. I can't, you know, get the other upgrades that I have, you know, missed because I didn't kill enough enemies. I can't do anything in this save file. I can do nothing. I beat the game. Great, wonderful. Isn't this supposed to be replayable? Isn't that part of the reason why this game is so short? Like most other shmups? But the fact of the matter is, is that why would I want to replay the game? The fact is with no different power-ups that you can make in the level so that there's a little bit of variety or different paths that you can go down. Yes, there may be some randomization in terms of the levels for enemies and how they spawn in terms of the limited set that they have. But they're not divergent enough so that it feels different when you play level 2 the first time versus the 5th time versus the ninth time. It pretty much feels the same pattern every single time. Which, to some extent, for a score-based game, that would be great. But not when I feel like the game isn't doing that much to begin with. It just feels boring. And that's the biggest flaw that a shmup can have. Boring. Beyond all the other elements that I could nitpick, how the sound design isn't impactful to really leave an oomph in terms of taking down an enemy, or the fact that the presentation in terms of the character design isn't necessarily appealing to the eye. If the game is boring, 
the game is boring and that's a huge problem with a shmup especially with the fact that the story isn't anything to write home about but what kills the game dead dead as in thrown into the paper shredder dead is the game's price that's 17.99 now 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 i've been on record saying that games are underpriced nowadays I know that's controversial for some of you to hear, and while I mean that mostly to the indie space, I mean it. Games are not cheap to produce, and take a lot of time and effort to create, even in the smallest cases. Yes, of course, there are asset flips, there are games that necessarily don't do what they should in terms of the price tag, but a lot of the you know, indie space, they're underpriced. But the problem with Paper Nebula is simple when i look at equivalent games at prices near paper nebulas in the same genre it's outclassed in almost every way against other games i could easily point to games like zero ranger but at that quality it's almost too easy zero ranger is one of the best in the genre i could point to a never awake which actually may be one of the best in the genre it's my next review by the way it's another great example of the genre and doing something a little bit different. Paper Nebula doesn't do anything really different here. Yeah, being able to get upgrades from the enemies is a good idea, but it's been done before. But even more mid-level titles, even ones that I have covered on this channel in certain cases that aren't necessarily the best in the genre, still outclass Paper Nebula in a lot of ways because they have some interesting presentation or they have some element that makes me want to replay things over and over again. There are so many good shmups out there old and new that for me to recommend Paper Nebula over any of them at this price, that's not gonna happen. Just look at some of the ones that I'm showing you on screen right now. Just look at them you'll notice that they do a lot more than Paper Nebula did. And I don't want to be that guy in terms of bashing a game and bashing the devs. I know this took effort. I know that you guys put in the effort to make this game. But a lot of your base ideas for your design, the genre commonalities that should be there because they're there for a reason, that's what makes the genre good, you haven't put in this game it's boring it's not fun to look at and frankly i cannot recommend it at any point i hate to say it but paper nebula gets a 35 out of 100. it's not worth a buy even with my enhancer system which takes the more subjective elements of games and tries to match a game to you may not be much of help here for most people if you fall into one of the following categories add or subtract that score to the main score if the first digit of your score changes refer to this chart to see if the game lies in the buyability rating for you the fact of the matter is <laughs> there's one group that i think will enjoy well i shouldn't say enjoy but will find this game useful and that's other devs to figure out why this game did things so differently and why it doesn't work. And I hope the game gets updates. I hope the game learns from this experience and they don't go under in terms of the development team. But I'm sorry, guys. If you want more information, I'm willing to give it to you in, in a Word doc or anything along that lines. But your game is just not up to snuff. That's it for this review, and I hate ending on that sour note, but, you know, sometimes reviews have to end like that. If you found this review useful, hit that like button and maybe share this review with a friend. Or hit that subscribe button if you want more reviews like this. I try to do a review every two weeks, but obviously there's so many indie games to cover. Which, you should go check out the Twitch channel. I look at two or three new indie games per week, probably two for the near future because got a wedding to prepare for and october hasn't exactly been the greatest of months in terms of finances but regardless you know go check out the twitch coming up next on the channel is my never awake review which let me tell you it's going to be an opposite 
experience from this review because Never Awake will be a great example of what creativity and understanding the genre can do while still making it your own thing. To say that I'm high on Never Awake would be an understatement. Anyway, that's it for now. And as always, keep on gaming.